So this is some of the most exciting, crazy time um, of of your mission is when you first get out there. And uh, I think what I remember most was getting on the plane, finally getting the plane after nine weeks of being in the MTC learning German. It's now six weeks, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, you're finally getting out there and you're just so excited and you're on this plane, you're like, wow, I'm doing this, I'm going. You get on the plane and they start making announcements in German and you understand maybe about a fourth of what they just said and you're, <laughs> you're just so excited and you're with everybody else you've been the MTC with. Um, something for me that was really neat on the, mis on the plane over was I was able to speak with the people sitting next to me. And one was an Amer well, both of them were German and uh, I, did, I spoke with them in English, <laughs> but um, I was able to give them both a, a Book of Mormon. And that experience really boosted my, my confidence going to the mission field, even though when I got there, I didn't understand a word that was being said, but it wasn't anything different from what I'd done before as not a missionary. It was just talking to people about what I had believed. And this time I had a name badge and it was my purpose. Um, so on the plane over, I remember having a conversation with this German man late into the night who would come, would come over to Arizona for a couple months every year. He was a wealthy German and would live over here. And we just got talking and uh, he really listened to me. And I remember that was one of the first time, I was a 19 year old kid and it was just interesting to hear that he respected what I had to say and um, felt the power, especially when I um, when I recited the first vision in German. He, spe he really paid attention to that and, and the spirit was accompanying the words I was saying and it was, a, it was a testimony to me that yeah, I am called of God and not that I can do anything of myself but this is, this is really from God. And then after landing, um, you're so tired because you're jet lagged and it's like three in the morning for you and you just got off an eight hour plane ride, but you're so excited to be there you get picked up by the assistants and the mission president is sitting there to wait for you. My mission president is not your mission president, of course, because they changed so much. I got home August of 2014, but my mission president's name was Lehi Karl Schwarz or Lehi. And, uh, he's this, he's a shorter, shorter man, um, but so full of love. And he just, the first thing you did when you got off the plane and got through uh, customs was, he just gave you a big old bear hug. And it, he just said, you just felt loved. And I'll never forget that. Then you go with the assistants and we walk through the streets of Germany. They took all our luggage, took it to the mission home. We didn't have to worry about it. And then we started talking to people on the street right then and there. And it was very, very nerve wracking because we could not understand the thing they were saying. Uh, a couple words here and there. You're so tired. And they finally took us to the mission office where we then sat and ate. They gave us some paperwork to fill out as far as keys, apartment, driving information. Um, and then we had interviews with our mission president one-on-one, -on -one, just five, 10 minutes so he could get to know us. And there's just something about sitting across from your mission president for the first time, even if you're only gonna have him for half a year, a year, your whole mission. Uh, that that man is somebody you're going to really look up to him and his wife and as you one thing my father taught me to do right before I went on my mission was to pray to have a good relationship with my mission president and my trainer and that's something I started doing before I went on my mission and I believe that prayer was answered because you you sat in there and it was like we we already knew each other though we'd grown up on two different continents after that, we went to the main square in Frankfurt, which just there's just skyscrapers all around you, and you're just sitting there going, where have I been sent to? And the people are different. They look different. The smells, sounds, sights, they're different. Uh, I remember thinking, maybe because I was really tired, like that everybody was just really beautiful. I was just so excited to be there and so happy to be there. And you just start talking to people. and. People are kind of rude, um, but there's people and I can still remember the conversations we had from what I said because I didn't understand what they were saying. And I still see their faces in my mind. And I know, and I, they, they did stop and they did listen. And there are people searching for the truth. Um, there are people who have questions and you being there is a testimony of God's love for them as well. 
I just remember feeling frustrated and tired that I couldn't say the things I wanted to say, but also feeling that, that God loved these people just as much as he loved me. And that was a special feeling, even though I didn't necessarily, you know, baptize someone off of that or, something, or anything.